Breathing. We are always breathing. Like quite literally, we can't get away from breathing. Of course, we can get away from it for a few minutes when we have a contest with people to see how long we can hold our breath or the occasional beautiful girl or moment in life takes our breath away. But otherwise, we're always breathing. And the fact is most of us are breathing incorrectly. This is something that we do every single day, all day long, all night long, yet we're doing it incorrectly. So in this video, we're gonna clear up all the clutter and make sure that you can breathe correctly. And if you haven't already, make sure to press the subscribe button so you get notified when videos just like this come out in the future. See, last week I had the pleasure to have Patrick McGowan of the Oxygen Advantage on my podcast. And Patrick talks about how nasal breathing, and there's these different mechanisms in nasal breathing that really are how we are supposed to breathe. See, we have this common misconception that a full, deep, big breath is what we need. But in reality, we need to be breathing lightly often throughout the day and make sure to really have the conscious awareness of our breath because not only will that ground us in the here and now, but it will also help make sure that our physiological mechanisms of breathing and de-stressing are activated day after day. Let's start with his first way to actually gauge and make sure that you're either breathing correctly or incorrectly, and it's called the BOLT score. So what the BOLT score is, is a super easy test, which you do in the morning, after you wake up, and before you go to bed at night, and all it is is a light breath through the nose, in and out and then you pinch your nose and you actually hold now the holding is the important part because we need to time how long we can go without breath until we start to get a spasm in the diaphragm or in the upper neck region which both indicate that we want to breathe because we're getting air hunger according to research patrick has showed that people and athletes who are performing at a high level or anybody who wants to perform at a high level and have peak cardiovascular health, and to make sure that they're actually breathing properly should be up to 40 on a bolt score. That means you're holding your breath after blowing it out for 40 seconds until you start to have those spasms. Me, personally, when I started this, was at 12 seconds. I'm up to 21 seconds, and 20 is the baseline for actual good breathing, right? Below that, what it means is a lot of times you're gonna sleep apnea. You're breathing through your mouth at night, and you're waking up with a dry tongue. All these different symptoms are signs that you mouth breathe often and you should never mouth breathe. Now, why shouldn't you mouth breathe? Well, he has a passage called mouths are for eating, noses are for breathing. The reason is most people don't realize that animals don't have connected noses and mouths for breathing. They only breathe through their nose. If they get sick or they're eating a lot of processed foods, Often they do start to breathe through their mouth, but we'll get to that in a minute. Nose breathing, on the other hand, is so beneficial in many ways. Not only does it purify the oxygen before it gets into your actual lungs, meaning if there's toxins or pollutants or some type of you know, break dust in the air, it's helping to clean some of that out. That's why you have nose hair. But it heats it up, it puts humidity in it. In the winter, it's gonna cool it down, it's gonna put humidity in it, and it keeps carbon dioxide in your body. Hold that thought on carbon dioxide because we're gonna to get to that in a minute. But just for now, realize breathing through the nose actually connects directly to the diaphragm and it helps make sure that you can breathe properly and with the correct muscles, the deep breathing that we always talk about. Now here's the thing, there's a deep breathing fallacy that's often taught by our yoga practitioners and Western thought nowadays. And what that is, quite literally, is people say, take a deep breath, right? Often they'll say through the mouth or they'll say through the nose, but they want you to puff everything up. And what that is doing is decreasing the amount of oxygen that your cells actually have available. The reason that that happens is because most of us sit between 98 and 100% on blood oxygen saturation level. What that means is that we already have enough oxygen circulating through our body. But what ends up happening is we take this big deep breath, we flush it out. Carbon dioxide on the other hand, when available in the blood, forces oxygen into the tissues. So when you want your muscles to have more oxygen, when you really actually want to satisfy your brain's need for oxygen, taking an inhale through your nose, an exhale through your nose, and pinching your nose increases carbon dioxide, which then allows you to actually use that oxygen that was in your body a lot more efficiently. Your hands and feet will heat up. You'll have rosy fingertips, which is a great sign that you're actually having a higher metabolism and things are going correctly. You'll notice you're de-stressing. You don't have anxious thoughts. There's so many benefits to breathing properly, 
getting carbon dioxide in. Ray Pete, who is a researcher originally out of Oregon, I think he moved somewhere in Mexico, talked about this for the past 20 years and no one likes to bring it up. I mean, in 1905, there's newspaper articles showing that mouth breathing is detrimental to kids because not only does it narrow the face and it narrows the jaw, but it narrows the palate and it makes it so the tongue can't stick to the top of the actual palate, making it so it's a lot harder to nose breathe and it feels like you should be mouth breathing. Making sure that your kids get a cranial orthodontist is very important because most orthodontists look for only cosmetic and not for how bones actually move in our face, which is horrible. There's actually a study done by the Weston A. Price Foundation where they took cats and they, they fed them either genetically modified or organic food. Over time, what happened to the cats that were getting genetically modified food, and this is going through generations of cats. This isn't just going through cats who were getting fed and not fed. This is seeing how genes are passed down and what's happened. These cats started to have narrower faces and quite literally couldn't breathe as well. The GMOs were making it worse. So processed food and breathing through the mouth do have a correlation. We don't know the causation mechanism. It's a chicken or egg scenario. But what we do know is increasing carbon dioxide and using natural foods, making sure your diet is better. You're not drinking as much water as you would think you need because no, you don't have to pound a gallon of water a day. Just make sure you're getting good oxygenated, good clean water every single day is important. We need more carbon dioxide. We need to make sure that we can activate these healing mechanisms. and. For reference, refer to the podcast, which I posted yesterday on the breathe, how to breathe right. The last mechanism, the last thing that we need to keep in mind when we actually want to breathe properly is to breathe light to breathe right. That's another chapter in the oxygen advantage. And quite literally what he means is in Tai Chi, the way that they rate people and uh, you can get points to motor, if they can see that you're breathing. Yeah, so now think about when you go to yoga class and they're like, Take a big, deep breath. They want you to see it. They want to hear your sigh. Both of those are expelling all of your carbon dioxide and making it actually a worse breath. You're not doing anything beneficial. And while your brain may trigger an ah response and you think that you're de-stressing, your adrenals are firing because now you have less oxygen available to what you need to do. Breathing right, on the other hand, is shown by Zen running, which is quite literally, you get your breath going, you focus on light breathing, you can run for a long time. There's a book on that and I'll link that in the description below. It's so important. You'll notice that you calm down. If you're in the gym and you're breathing heavy, of course your heart rate elevates, you get more stress, and you actually get out of breath quicker. Whereas if you're in the gym and you're working hard, and you try to calm your breath down and make sure that you're back at baseline, your fitness is increasing. You're aerobically more fit because your body doesn't need all this excess oxygen, which is increasing carbon dioxide, which makes you tingle, which makes your head feel weird. And of course, then you feel nauseated and you need to sit down. All in all, remember to breathe light, breathe through your nose, make sure it's with your diaphragm, exhale, hold for a few seconds, and don't take those big deep breaths or sigh throughout the day. And you're really gonna make sure that you are breathing properly. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If it helped you in any way, make sure to press the like. Comment below with what's happening while you're trying this nasal breathing. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe so I can make more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in a video soon.